What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central sterile processor? All right, guys, <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through on, on how to document a load in your tracking system. Then I'm going to show you a little manual version. So first things first, guys, is you want to confirm your printout. So that first initial there is the initial of the individual who started it, which is me, and the individual um, that uh, checks it, full signature in the bottom, which is me as well. So what am I looking for? Okay, I am looking for the confirmation of the parameters I checked. All right, I want to look at the time, the temperature, and that pressure because I set this machine for a 270 degree, four minute, 30 minute dry time cycle. All right, all that is outlined there and I want to confirm it. Okay, I want to confirm the load. Okay, sterilizer name, load is on the printout. And I want to confirm that on my lot sticker. So here I am on my system. Okay, I'm already on my sterilization load screen and this is what it looks like. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and look for sterilizer number four, load number 10. I'm gonna go ahead and document. So I'm gonna press the move button. I'm moving my load to the cooling area. Hitting the next button here. Okay, the next screen is gonna show me my parameters that I need to put in there. And I've already went over the parameters. 30 minute dry time, four minute exposure, and then document the lowest temperature, which I find from the first S to the first E. And I look for that lowest temperature. So the lowest temperature found is 270 degrees. And you can look at it at the end summary here where the temperature min and max was recorded. But sometimes those numbers don't match what's on a printout because for like a second, it can be a little different number on there. But 270 was my lowest temperature and everything passes. Okay, I'm going to hit the next button here. The next screen here is going to ask me if my chemical indicator um, pass. Now, in order to do that, I need to open it up. But first, I should have mentioned that we should be looking at that indicator on the outside of the PCD pack. If that indicator fails, then, then the load fails. That's automatic. I, I jumped the gun on that and I apologize. Even though the parameters passed and everything, I would mark my load as failed if that dot did not change <clears throat> because I can't justify it. Regardless of all the other ones passing, if the internal ones pass, you have to assume that something's going on. So you would mark, in my opinion, you would mark that load fail, but check your policies and procedures. All right, so I'm trying to do this one-handed, guys. I apologize. Um, so, all right, you're going to open up your PCD, and in the middle of that PCD, there's going to be a biological with another type one indicator on there if that doesn't change you raise a red flag all right but here's my chemical indicator there's a little card here i'm going to show you how to fill this out for a manual process if you're not using a tracking system but anyway my type 5 indicator passed so i'm going to go ahead and confirm that i'm going to go ahead and hit the next screen the next screen is going to make me is asking me to um load my files via scanning into the system so bear with me here so i'm gonna go ahead load it up and you know this is what it's gonna look like on the screen so my printout and my indicator is scanned into the system so i have an electronic copy and a paper copy okay i'm gonna add that file now i'm gonna go ahead and do my uh biological now the crusher is what you should be using um, to activate your um, biological, but I kind of dislike the, the design of that because it always rips off the type 1 indicator on the top. So when these came out initially, there was three ways to activate them, and I've always stuck with this method. It's just squeeze it down. It'll crack. What you want to do is flick it and shake it down until all the media goes down to the little square reservoir. You don't want to see no air bubbles or anything in that area, so give it a nice good shake. Okay, I'm going to show you how to um, go ahead and put this on the 
in the computer system. It'll show you how to crack it, how to activate it, and then you're going to load it into your incubator. Okay, the flat side to the back. And then just push down on it to make sure that you fully activate it. You're going to see three little asterisks. When the asterisks count down, it'll give you a 24 minute countdown. And whichever while you put it in should, if it's married up to your system, will show up. On your screen, you confirm it. Make sure that your lot numbers match the control lot number. You're going to say use the existing control. You're going to hit the next button. And then that's it, guys. Now you have to wait 24 minutes before you can release that load. All right. So you'll hit your pause document, wait the 24 minutes, and then you can go ahead and release that load um, for use. That's as easy as it is to do a um, electronic copy. Now I'm going to show you how to do a manual copy. If you don't have an electronic system and you have to still use a manual process, it's no problem. Pretty easy. So here's what's on the information it asks for. It asks you for the test pack number. It asks you for the date, the department, the sterilizer, what load you're going to run. This is where the load's found, the last two digits or the last digit. It's going to ask you the temperature and exposure that you ran. Okay, that's in your summary right there. And the initial of the individual that's going to document that. That would be yourself. Okay. Next is going to ask you for your test and control number lot numbers. Those numbers should always match. Your control should be positive. The integrator, the type 5 integrator, if it's in the pack, acceptable or reject it. So this is what it looks like when it's filled out all the way. All the information that's required on it, it should be legible, readable for anyone who pulls this record. This would be taped together with or stapled together with the printout and the indicator and held for your records. Now, people always ask, often ask me, why is there an NA next to the test control and the integrator? Well, the thing is, not every test pack or not every PCD has a biological indicator or a type 5 indicator it can have either or or in this case both they would all be considered pcd depending on what you use to release your load now if it's an implant it should always be a biological but for a regular load it can just be a chemical indicator all right so all that information is documented on this little card for your records all right guys as always stay true to yourselves keep it 100 continue educating yourself until next time peace